Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of the 704 High School Highlight. My name is Jeff Taylor. I'll be your host for this podcast every single time we do it. And listen, it's a part of Beheckle Sports, which I'm proud to be a part of. We're doing some great things. We're trying to become your home for high school sports, and that's really uh, the reason we did this. And of course, every week or every time we do this, we're going to talk about football. We're going to talk about baseball, all the sports that are out there, and we're going to have a guest every single time we do this, whether it's a player, coach, parent, athletic director, or somebody like my first guest, Darren Vaught, who was our play-by-play man for our Bay Heckle Sports High School Game of the Week. Darren, thanks so much for being here. I know you did the Game of the Week with us. Yeah. Let's tell folks a little bit more about yourself, because I know you do a lot more than just the Game of the Week. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So as uh, many play-by-play people do, it's uh, you sort of piece things together season to season. So uh, my fall consisted of the Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week, presented by Bojangles, which is just drilled into my memory exactly. now because you got to say it that way. Um, but I do a lot of play-by-play, High Point University men's basketball. I do a lot on the ACC Network Extra, the digital ESPN platform for them, and uh, a number of sports, you know, you name it. I've done the NCAA Regionals in women's gymnastics for ESPN3, um, awesome. The ACC track and field championships for ACC and X. Uh, a lot of baseball come springtime. Uh, I do the Durham Bulls as, as sort of their number two right. play-by-play broadcaster as well. Uh, and a lot with USA Baseball, which is based, of all places, right here in North Carolina. Right. It's in Cary, North Carolina, the national training complex uh, for USA mm-hmm. Baseball. So, you know, it's a lot of things, right? <laughs> you just piece, piece a lot of stuff together and, um, you yeah, know, it's... A, it's Best job in the world, man, and, and the game of the week was no exception. It was, yeah, let's, it was let's, a blast. Let's talk a little bit about that. You know, it, um, our first one was back with the kickoff weekend, I think, at Memorial Stadium, Yeah, if and, I'm correct, right? Yeah, and we and, did uh, three, four and four games in three days. I think so, exactly, because like yeah. we had, I think, Providence and 8K, so yeah. Um, a little rough at the beginning, but it, just talk to me about being a part of that and how cool it was, and maybe where did it rank in terms of, you know, you've done those higher echelon things, but you got to be proud of what we did. A hundred percent. And I, it, it was cool for me. I sort of skipped. You talk to people who, who are in this and, and call games and their beginnings were are, are usually, you know, OK, I was sitting atop a rickety press box doing right. high school football or middle school football or whatever, just just to get a start and to get reps. I, I played sports in high school, so I didn't have the, the free time to do this. And a lot of the times the games that I would have liked to have called, I was playing them. Right. So um, I, I didn't get my start until I was in college, which was sort of my version of this, right? I went right. to a Division three school at the time, Emory and Henry College in Virginia. So they, I went to Randolph-Macon. Yeah, we've, we've established <laughs> the, the ODAC. The, the ODAC ties. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's a version of sort of the, the, the rickety, small-time broadcast, right? Because right. for, for sure. me, I was doing it on student radio. Right men's and women's basketball, and we eventually, when I stopped playing baseball at Emory, started doing uh, radio broadcasts for the baseball team, and I was a part of those as well. But I never really did a lot of high school sports. So that's what's been cool about this, is is sort of being at this level for the first time consistently in my professional right. life. Um but man, the high school football is so good around here, and the crowds—it's—it's it's, it's kind of crazy. I mean, yeah. the atmosphere. Um, you know, and what was cool for me was seeing the journey that we took at Bay Heckle Sports in the game of the week, where at the really at the beginning nobody knew us. Yeah. But by the end, people were coming up, going, "Hey, we love what you do." People recognize me, or they recognize you guys and your voices, or being out there on the field and seeing the signage. That was kind of cool to see that. Yeah, and uh, I think it's. As anything would be, right? You gotta, you gotta get your footing right underneath you. And we d- technically were still trying to learn right. how we were gonna do this in the beginning. And right. a lot of credit goes to Mike Moore of NAS, who is the producer of this whole thing. And um, he, he really took this thing by the horns and turned it into something that, by the end of the year, especially, I mean, it was, it was special, right? right? Like we, we. He, I'm sure he would say the same thing. Mike would. uh, I would. I've talked to Reggie Walker, our analyst, who I'll brag about, um, about the same thing. We're we're really proud of the job that we did. And we got to to do so much. We did some playoff games. Right. 
that were close and really competitive. And we had a few blowouts though during the year. <laughs> we had a couple. I mean, you know, any football season is right. is is going to come with those. But man, I'd never done a, a a football state championship in the state of North Carolina. We did the NCIS right. state championship between Charlotte Christian and Providence Day. That was a thrill for me. Right. Um, it, it, it's been a lot of fun. It was really cool, and I will brag on, on yeah, Reggie. Talk, yeah, talk to me a little bit about Reggie, because Reggie, you know, his background, and uh, just a fantastic guy, but just where he came from college-wise and stuff and just the knowledge he has. Yeah, first of all, super guy. I, I He and I worked a it, – it's you do some of the ESPN3, the digital right. stuff, and you just sort of get random assignments. And I mentioned all the sports and platforms that I do games for. You just get thrown with, with – random analysts right. a lot. No, I say random. Sure. They're just people you're not familiar <laughs> with until, you know, 30 minutes, an hour beforehand when you sit down at the at the booth with them. I actually did a game like South Carolina State and Furman, I think, playoff. Yeah. 20 ESPN3. It, when it, we got it, there an hour beforehand, I didn't know who the play-by-play or color <laughs> analyst was. But by the end of the game, we had a little, you know. You're meeting, a, a, pro- yeah. you're meeting a producer for the right. first time. Maybe if you see them in person. If not, you're Two hours beforehand. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> so that's how those go. Um, that's how Reggie and I met initially. That's how Mike and I met originally. Right. Okay. Mike was brought in to produce an ESPN three college basketball game. It was, I think, Charleston Southern at High Point. Right. And because they had shopped it out, there are the tiers, uh, levels of, of games. They had shopped it out. Mike was the producer. Reggie was the analyst, and I was the play by play. We did not know each other. I guess Reggie and Mike knew each other because they worked at ESPN together um, for a time. But I, I did not know them prior to doing that game. And it was one of those things where you feel like you do a good job. You think you're enjoyable to work with. <laughs> but, you know, Reggie and I kept up. Mike and I kept up. But it, it's not like we talked every day. Right. So then uh, in July, I believe it was, I get a call from Mike about this package of games. He's like, hey, I need, I need somebody to do play-by-play. It's going to be reliable. It's going to be like 14 or 15 games. Right. Here's the deal about what Bay Hackle Sports is, is putting into this. And um, I was like, well, did you call Reggie? Because <laughs> Reggie and I did a basketball game. Right. But for years, he and I would text after that about how we've got to, we got to get some football together because he's a football guy. He played basketball, but, you know, he played football at Penn State He's a sharp guy. He knows television, of course, because he, he was producer at ESPN. Right. He's got Emmys to show for that. The pride he has is just, you can, every yeah. time you talk to him. And he's he's been in these players' shoes. He's been right. in the coaches' shoes because right. he's helped out. Right. I think Metro Lina, he coached yep. on their JV team for a year. So he gets it, right? Like, he knows the coaches around here. He understands it from the players' perspective. And he's essential for me doing a good job right. because when we would talk to coaches normally on Thursday mornings, we would get both coaches by phone. Um, and, and you just walk into a conversation with instant credibility. Right. Right. And it's huge. It's huge for somebody like me because again, I played sports, but a lot of the times, Jeff, these play by play people come into these production meetings and we're kind of the nerds, right? Like I'm, 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 I'm asking a coach, okay, how do you pronounce this kid's name? Oh, no. You know what I mean? Like, I got to yep. say it right. Uh, so I'm I'm talking about the less fun things. Right. And then Reggie's like, what kind of defense you guys run? What, what's your what's he your, dives in. What's your angle here? He dives into that stuff. And, you know, maybe I get a follow-up in or two. But uh, mainly, I'm hearing what he's getting out of it. Right. And that's it's, – it's super productive for me. Um, I can't say enough good things about Reggie. And by this point, I mean, he's, he's like you have, he's, he's become a friend and um, somebody that uh, I, I really enjoy being around. So, um, and Mike too. Mike too. Damon Welch was sort of our, our de facto the whole crew out there. engineer. Um, yeah, the whole crew was, was awesome all year. And, and they kind of took their, took their lumps early like the rest of us did. And um, we turned it into to something, I, again, I think, we all are proud of, and um, hopefully it's gonna sky's be, the limit. Uh, yeah, hopefully it's going to be a staple for for years. I agree. I agree. The interesting part too was funny note was Bay Hackle Sports getting announcers each week to say that. <laughs> yeah, that was a, you know that was the, the a PA chore. announcer. <laughs> They're like, oh, what did he just say? And you run to the 
You'd run up to the uh, you know to the press box and go, it's a Bayakel sports. There'd be uh, Bahakel. Bay- all kinds Bay-Kel. of. We, we, yeah, we heard a it was, of mispronunciation. It, it was all over the place. <laughs> well, it was a great year. Um, so now, obviously, we turn our attention to championship weekend. And um, eight teams. And, you know, as I was kind of doing some research on all of them, you know, we always talk about defense winning championships. Mm-hmm. At least you always hear that, defense wins championships. And as I was looking at some of these things, I'm like, okay, these teams – Put a lot of points on the board. <laughs> you know, we take a look at the 1A. Um, you know, it's Tarboro, Tarboro and Mount Airy. And I was looking just, you know, Mount Airy went 14-1. and one, And, like, their last few games, you know, 58 nothing, 44-7, 62 nothing, 66 nothing, 55 nothing, 72 to nothing, 57-7, 49-0, 35-17, and 35-6. <laughs> That's some speed. Yeah, it's – it's um. It's been interesting because, like I said, I, I don't have a ton of familiarity with with football at this level, or I didn't coming into the season. Right now, of course, I've I've gotten my fill and then some of of the area's teams anyway. And each week, when you would sort of do your homework on every team, watch film if, if it's available, talk to the coaches, that sort of thing, you, you come to find out that. Scoring points is a priority. Not that it hasn't always been right, a priority, right. but most teams are running some sort of spread offense, and it's very much a a pro pro style look. Yeah, I quotes, mean, um, because they want to put up points, and and some of the teams that we saw, uh, like Independence, for instance. I mean that that was one of the best offenses in the state. I don't think it's an and, exaggeration to say. And, and shout out to DJ McFadden. Yeah. What he's done with that program is is amazing yeah. in the two years he's been there. And when you talk about independence, even though they didn't get to the point they wanted to be, just what a fantastic year. Yeah, and, and it just goes to show, like, look, we had some really good teams on the schedule with really good defenses. Reggie and I called the game, it was uh, Mallard Creek at Huff. Huff. Maybe the game of the year, 13-9. Yep. There wasn't an offensive touchdown scored. And we right. walked away from that game thinking – I mean, either of these teams could could make it, right. and you know, had things panned out a little bit differently, it's it's so nuanced, right? Whether a team advances or not, they right. certainly were capable. But it gets you thinking. Okay, maybe the lack of offense in certain scenarios was maybe what did them in, right? right. It's just it's. It's not like it used to be in that a team like that with such a dominant defense. I mean, Mallard Creek had two pick sixes in that right. game. Yep. And they played great defense all season long. But, as but you if you can't put points on the board, man, right. like it's going to be really, really tough to win. So Mount Airy plays uh, Tarboro, I think is what we said. You know a little bit about Tarboro. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, it's funny. I've had like at least slight brushes with – just about every region of the state in my career. Um, when I was producing a statewide syndicated talk radio show, the David Glenn show, um, we would have state champions on. So their coach, Jeff Craddock was on a, a number of times because they right. won a number of them. And Todd Gurley, formerly of Georgia in the, the LA Rams played at Tarboro and was a s- superstar. Right? right. He was amazing. Right. At that level, as you can imagine, um, so Craddock would come on and, and talk. I think when when the Rams were in the Super Bowl and Gurley was with them, maybe or um, maybe the Rams were playing at the Panthers or something like that. For whatever the occasion, we had Craddock on to talk specifically about right. Gurley too. Um, I mean, that's a that's a winning culture if you're ever going to find one in our state. So um, I, I don't because they weren't in our our. We didn't cover right. a team out there. I, I don't know a ton about them, but I know this man. They're going to play hard. They're going to be fast, and uh, they're going to be discipline. They're going to be tough. Yeah, they're going to be tough to beat. They're going to be tough to beat. Yeah. So uh, the two A is we have uh, East Duplin and Reedsville. Um, once again, didn't know a whole lot about either one of them because they were, of course, outside our deal. But looking at them again, I mean, East Duplin fourteen and one. And once again, as I looked at their schedule, I, they had to have averaged well above fifty points a game, and were giving up less than six or seven. Um, I, I'm starting to see a trend here. It's these teams that, okay, we're going to play offense and we're going to play defense. Um, and just, I, you know, they just go out and I, I don't know any other way to say it other than smack people in the mouth. Yeah. Um, and, and so good for them. But then 
you take a look at their opponent, which is uh, Reedsville. Yeah, you're talking one, two, three, four. I got my notes here in front of me. One, what, one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, like seven state championships. Yeah. Since 2002. Nine and two in state. They've gone to not, they've gone, yeah, they've gone to 11 games <laughs> since 2002. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's what well, I mean, I was, I basically am going to say the same thing about them as I did Tarboro. Like I, I know the, the, the pedigree that's there and that makes it a very, very tough program to bet against in, in these situations, right? Like if they're good enough to be there, chances are they got a team that can, can win the whole thing. And, um, it is interesting though, when you deal with, with high schools, it's a, it's, it's a bit different because obviously these, these kids haven't been there or weren't there right. in 07 or, or whatever year you pick out right. that, that Reedsville won a, a state championship. So it does, um, the, the variability is there on a year to year basis that uh, I found that to be pretty interesting doing these high school games this year, sort of the unpredictability. You mentioned the blowouts that we had. Right. Who would have thought? Schedule. Right. We, we did our best. We picked really good games, games that were hyped up to be pretty pretty competitive. I go back to Porter Ridge and Hickory Ridge, I think. Yeah. And I thought Porter Ridge, I thought there'd be a, a – Porter Ridge was undefeated at the time, and I thought Hickory Ridge would give them a game. And it was like 40 to nothing Hickory Ridge at the half. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> um, we had – I'm trying to think of what maybe the worst ones were. We had Butler in a big blowout win. Maybe that was one that we sort of expected. I think it was East, East Mac. Mac. And it was, okay, so like for me to do my stories and to do my live shots for WCCB and stuff, you know, I'm figuring, okay, I got 45 seconds. That's like three touchdowns or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Butler East Mech, I had that in the first six minutes. <laughs> I literally put my camera that down. That was the one first yes, snap. Right. It they was fumbled, a, a fumbled fumble return for a, turn for for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I think they blocked a punt. Yep. Um, so literally literally four minutes into the game, it was 21 nothing, And it was, I want to say, Darren, it was in the 60s at halftime. It, yeah. it, 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 it was close. I'm trying to remember. I think Butler ended up with 69. <laughs> okay. But Maybe they, they were 62. That's what I think it was 62. Yeah, that's they what I'm thinking. They called off the dogs. Right. Time. And even then, <laughs> yeah. But you know, kudos to, and we'll go back to it. We'll get back to the, the playoff stuff in just a minute, though. But you know, the the one thing I saw in these games, though, is you, you know you have coaches where you're getting blown out, but the kids aren't quitting. Yeah, the coaches are still coaching, um, and the other team has enough respect, which is which is cool when you see high school football played that way. They're not yeah. gonna put up. I mean, Butler could have easily put up, you know, triple digits. So. Yeah, but and I think what's What's compelling about these games, even when they turn into those blowouts, Butler was a team that was very much looking ahead to the brackets that you're you're holding there, right? Like right. they they had their minds set, set. on postseason football. Therefore, you want to build some depth. That was pretty early in the season, so Butler took that as an opportunity to put in some some fringe guys in in terms right. of a starting lineup and get them snaps and, and plays that I'm sure lent itself to their development going through the rest of the season. And it's it's just everybody, every school like that that's been there before, right. there's a mentality that sort of makes use, makes good use out of any situation, right. which, again, is, is the compelling part. And for, you know, for Reggie and me, for instance, sitting up at the booth, we, we can – we can speculate as to okay, what's what's Brian Hales thinking, thinking right now when he's got a you know uh, a, a, a second stringer in in the second half. That's where Reggie comes in handy, where it's like okay, well, what's he looking for, right? He's looking who's going to get him to the championship next year. Yes, how he's building that program. I mean, or or when we've seen this happen before, starting quarterback goes down with an injury. You don't want to take a hit in in terms of potential and prospects of winning a championship right if something like that were to happen you want your backup to have been there before right um so yeah no i mean it's it's and to be clear the backups on these teams are are well equipped right ready they're, to go they're the guys that are going to be the guys next year or two right. years when the Bayhackle sports game of the week is in town right cool um 3a uh, as we roll on here uh northern nash against east lincoln um and this was, and I was going over the notes yesterday, and and, and we're, I'm learning more about schools. <laughs> yeah. But Northern Nash 
beat 71st. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> Do you know? I just, it's in Fayetteville. Okay. I had no, I'm like. I, I know that because. Of and my apologies to anybody out there who may be. I just didn't know. And I'm like, <laughs> I grabbed my kid yesterday. I'm like, Nate, hey, it's it's Northern Nash beat 71st. He's like, wait, what? And 70, I'm like, okay. I, I believe 71st <laughs> Academy is what it's called or referred to as in full. Um, I know of it because of, I used to do play-by-play for William Peace University. Okay. Men's and women's basketball, Got it. Division three school in downtown Raleigh, um, and at the time they had the men's team had a, a player, a star that came from seventy first. So this and, and it's one of those things that you only know it if you've seen, seen it. Seen it, yeah. But um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at you know, I'm, I'm looking at uh, you know, Northern Nash and same thing we talked about. I'm looking at their score. I mean, a they went fifteen and zero, um, but you know, like, once again, I don't think they had a game. Well, they had a, a couple um, in the in the high 20s, but of course, then yeah. they were shutting people out or whatever, but still, the 40s, the 50s, and stuff like that. Okay, so on the other side of the ball, East Lincoln. Once again, I didn't know a whole lot about him, but John Treach, who works at WCCB with me, he went out there uh, this past Friday night. He said there was like, he thought it was like 10, 15,000 fans, which I guess is not surprising, but, um, <laughs> you know, hey, 15 and 0, why would you not? Yeah, um, and that's the fun thing, too, at this stage of the season. You see a lot of, a lot of, Clean slates or a lot of undefeated records, uh, 15 and 0. I know that's going to be the case at the 4A level too, for both teams. And um, what I guess East Lincoln is is technically, if, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you have a rooting interest for Charlotte area teams, right? I mean, it, it's kind of our last, kind of our last, uh, our last hope, which is bizarre because I I, I thought really that we were going to have a team at the 4A level for sure between uh, the numbers of, of great teams that we covered on the game of the week um, at, at that at that level. So let's talk a little bit about 4A, and we're talking about New Bern versus Grimsley. And, you know, when you talk about New Bern, another team 15-0, and 0, putting up 40, 50 points, giving up less than 14, another recipe for success. Yeah, both 15-0 and 0 teams. New Bern is one of those teams that – They've been here before. They've had really good teams in the past. This one is no different. But Grimsley, I, I mean, look, they, they took out, what, three, four Charlotte area teams on their way to this point. Yeah, they, 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 kick, they kicked off with just beating Davey 69-37. Yeah. Then they turned around and beat Charlotte Catholic um, by 12. Then you talk about beating Independence, who had put together a great season. Yeah. Uh, 44 to 36. Sort of ahead of schedule, too, though. Like, and Ind- Independence is going to be I, there. Again. I, I agree. I agree. And then, you know, but the one that got me, though, was, you know, against Weddington. You know, 28 27 missed extra point. Yeah. Um, and for somebody who kicked, <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah. and, you know, I, I just felt <laughs> so stings. bad. I mean, it, it just stings. And for Weddington to end on that note, um, and, and, you know, I hope the kid is okay because a kicker doesn't lose a game. Let's be right. real. That's what I always always heard was a kicker never loses a game. Yeah. I, I remember one time I missed an extra point and the coach was like, we didn't score enough points. Yeah. Our defense shouldn't have given up that much. Yep. But anyway, when we talk about Grimsley, I mean, they're the one seed and they're there for a reason. Yeah, and, and again, they've sort of dashed all of our hopes uh, all, all postseason long of trying to get a, a Charlotte area team in that game. But as as – we began this package of games, Reggie and I, started to pay a little bit more attention, closer attention, especially at the 4A level, to teams across the state. And I'll say this, from beginning to now, Grimsley's been like the it team. Right. They, they, it's been them and then other really good teams that you get into the conversation of, can this team win a state championship? Right it immediately goes to, all right, well, could they get through Grimsley? And um, I, Weddington was the team that we had become most familiar with. Right. We saw them the most by the end because we did a we couple of We saw them like three or four games. times. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, we did, let's see, we did uh, Weddington and, and Providence Day was yep. our, our week two game. Right. We saw them early, right. and they got trounced yep. by PD, which, of course, they – ended up winning their their state championship and was it was a really good team um but weddington had come a long way 
right since the beginning of the season since that point right at that it for that game they hadn't even really figured out who their starting quarterback was right. going to be sure. on a regular basis i'm going to shout out Knox Willingham while we're at it because that dude lost the quarterback battle went to his coaches said i want to play i want to be a starter i want to play every down and they put him at defensive end. <laughs> and he was twice, twice, Jeff, in a three-week span. We, he was our Bojangles player yeah. of the game when we did a Bay Heckle Sports Game of the Week because he affected the game both offensively and defensively. True team player in all every um, sense of the word. An amazing, amazing player at this level. That being said, Grimsley is really good because right. to beat that wedding team, Weddington team with the way that the Warriors had developed by right. – the end of the season to right. beat that team, whether it's by one or twenty-one, whatever you got to be good. Right. Um, so no, that one should be should, should be, be an fun. interesting game. Yeah. yeah. And 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 the cool part is for everybody out there, uh, we are actually going to show them all live on either WCCB or MeTV. So we'll get that on social media and stuff where you can watch those games. But we're going to show all four live, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. So let's move to our last little bit of. Two, two more things. Um, obviously, one of the cool things is season's wound down for a lot of kids who are going to get another opportunity to play. Something called the Queen City Bowl, Senior Bowl, Queen City Senior Bowl. Uh, it is Saturday, December the 17th. It's their fourth year doing this. And I think they have well over 80 players uh, from right here in the Charlotte area or, or the surrounding areas. And, um, you know, um, and, and, and we're going to cover it. Yeah. We are covering it, um, which is going to be awesome. It'll be on Bay Heckle Sports. And, um, you know, just to cover that, that's awesome. But when you look at the roster, you know, we've seen a lot of these kids. And, and you know what? There's some talent. Let me just tell you this. I think 50 kids who played in last year's game are now on college rosters. Yeah. And the cool part about this, even during, like, the, the practices, which start next week, they've actually had college coaches and scouts come out and offer kids scholarships on the spot. So it, it, it's, a, it's a cool deal. And they do some reading stuff. They're having a parade and a reading day at the Metro School next Friday. Um, and uh, doing something there. So just all around a cool deal. But the players um, get a chance to shine. Yeah, I'm excited to be uh, a part of it. I forgot this. about it. Yeah, you're in the booth. And, and I'm going to so, be on the sidelines. Yeah, yeah. So. And to, we'll, we'll actually work um, on a broadcast yep. together. So cool. that'll be fun with Matt Morrow and Stan Norfleet with me up in the booth as analysts. You're on sideline. That'll be uh, a lot of fun. This is the first game of this nature that I'll have called. So I'm right. excited to sort of – get the all-star game feel right it'll be fun there'll be a lot of different players out there like you said most of whom we've seen right this season and and are familiar with a couple I'm, you're excited to see yeah oh zymil patterson i mean I we're excited you, to Reddington. see all of them we're excited to yeah, see all of them but of course of course and they're all really good players as i'm looking through the list just the ones that jump out uh i i mentioned we saw weddington more than any other team zymil patterson is such a great athlete, um, kick returner, slot man in, in the, as a receiver. Um, so that's, that's fun. I talked about that Mallard Creek defense. There are a couple of guys from that defense that are going to be in this game that excite me a lot. Ishan Abdul-Ali, uh, Jamil Muldrow is going to be there in the game, and then Jaden Bowden is the other one. And Muldrow and Bowden both, I think, had multi-interception games right. on – Bay Heckle Sports Game of the right. Weeks. So a couple of phenomenal talents. Jack Schultz I saw from A.L. Brown. We just saw him the once, but I was definitely impressed by him. Uh, I saw he's on here. Juice Jones from Butler. Yeah, Juice. Um, One of my favorite names. Oh, of way. course, yeah, right? Uh, Joe Reddish from, from Independence. Uh, mentioned Providence Day, one of their great receivers. Jaden Holler and then tight end slash – um, defensive stud Liam Gruel is going to be in it as well. I mean, it, it's a it's a it's a great list of yeah. Names. No, one of the kids too, Logan McElvain, plays at Providence, uh, defensive back. I coached him in Pop Warner, so I've had a chance to see him grow and, and grow as a player, and I know uh, how excited he is. So it is, it's just a great opportunity, and uh, kudos to that whole crew who's put this together because yeah, it's, just, it's, and, it's a phenomenal deal. Well, and and you know Matt Morrow and, and Stan Norfleet again, they they've been around for the first three renditions of this, so they've got some vested interest. They've got some skin Absolutely. in the game when it comes to this this showcase. I like it because their priority is getting kids noticed, right? By coaches yep. who may have, and it's the, it's the a senior bowl. It's it's guys who may have slipped through the cracks. <clears throat> a lot of these guys 
already have offers, but it gives them another opportunity to put their talents on display. And that's something that we, we tried to key on most of the season with the games of the right. week. We would ask coaches, hey, do you have a player that you feel is maybe a little under the radar? Right. Right. How can we help? Right. If if that player, I mean, you know, we're not embellishing by any means. No, but if that not. if they tell us, hey, I wish player X would, would, get, a would more. get more sure. looks, and then player X makes a big play, we can. We're, we're going to say it, right? We're going to mention. We got the medium to do it. Yeah, a hundred percent. So that's that's part of it is is having having this platform, but like using it right? right to get to get kids in the area noticed sure. and and prop up the programs and the coaches and the players so thanks for being here number one yeah i just greatly course, appreciate it um it, it's been a cool way to start i want to finish it with kind of a hot topic okay and it really goes to what we were just talking about so in terms of high school kids high school seniors um and i one thing too i want everybody out there i'm i'm a I'm brutally honest, so I just let it fly, and this is a great, <laughs> great opportunity to do this uh, with these hot topic type deals. The transfer portal. Yeah, it opened up, um, and you know I was at the ACC press conference with Dabo and Mac, um, and they were talking about the transfer portal, and Mac was like, "I'll have you know a kid play Saturday, and by Monday he'll be gone." Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I never have, and, and and I guess the gist is I've seen kids. You know, work hard to get to where they are, mm -hmm. to take that next step. And granted, if you are a stud, and you know what I'm getting at, there are kids who are they're going to go to Alabamas, and they're going to go to Georgias, and they're going to go to all of that because they're that good and stuff. That kid that has worked and is on the fringe of getting a D1 offer or yeah. whatever, it's just being taken away. And, and I understand college coaches want to, you know, hey, we'll get the experienced kids. But where does it leave these kids – and I just, I, I don't know your feeling. I don't like it. I, yeah. I never have. And, 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 I, and I just, I think it's, 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 to me, it's taking away the energy and enthusiasm for those kids who want to go to the next level and play. It's, it's like anything, it's nuanced, right? There's give and take. I, I love the, the idea of the player empowerment. I think some of the rules that they initially put in place for to, to, to be a little bit more lenient with with transfers their hearts were in the right place right. with that right then it sort of spun out of control right because you get players who and look I, I don't know maybe time will tell we need a, a greater volume of them to to understand okay this percentage of transfers works out right well Right, and it turns out in the end it was a change of scenery that was needed, and it was a better fit for the kid. The problem is, while everyone is trying to get that, that change of scenery is the perfect fit, sort of thing. Like you said, it it sort of undercuts the players who know where they want to be, right, and know where they want to be for four years, right, and know the path they want to take to earn a spot in a starting lineup or whatever. So it's sort of it, it's sort of self-eating in that way because so many players are doing the transfer thing and coaches are buying in on the transfer thing and they'd rather have a player who, who has spent two years at whatever school as their starter rather than the, the, the sophomore or junior that they have who's been there at practice every day and just hasn't started in that scenario. So it, it's sort of... It would be it would be easy, but also sort of lazy to say, well, you can have it both ways because right. it's becoming less possible to have it that that more conventional, traditional way. And you know, I go back. I talk about the high school kids maybe not getting their shot. You know, and, and I'll 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 end it with this. You know, so you know, Deion Sanders moves to Colorado, and I don't know if you saw his speech to the players at Colorado, encouraging them to to get in the portal. Bye. Right. And it literally yeah. goes, you know, I'm bringing in my horses. Yeah. And these horses will run, and they will, you know, win. And I'm, like, sitting there going. Including his son, who uh, and, is going to be in competition at least for the starting quarterback spot. Now, it's just, it, it's straight, again, it's, it's, uh, it's, there are layers. You don't want to, you don't want to admonish somebody like Dion for I, 
doing basically no, whatever what everybody the other else coach is doing. Does. And he whatever just says it. Coach does. He He's just, just says saying it. the quiet part right. out loud, right? Right. That's God bless thing. him. That's the thing about the other right. the other coaches is maybe they're just a little bit better. You at know, about right? Not not being as blatant, right? Um, so I, I I respect his honesty, and we all sort of know that it's human nature when you take over a program, you're going to want to put your stamp on it. It's the yep. same thing athletic directors do with coaching positions. Coaches do it with with quarterbacks right. or, or whatever position. Sure. They want it to be their their hire, their placement in that right. role, um, for better or worse, because it's theirs, right? right. And they're yeah. there now to do a job, and they're going to do that job. So it's, uh, it's sticky. It, it, it's for sure something that college sports as a whole, as a collective, something is going to have right. to be figured out. Because like, there's a balance, right? There's a compromise. There's an in-between somewhere it's a that, fine we, line, though, that we have not found. Yep. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, Darren Vaughn, thanks for your time, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. This Looking a forward lot of to on the Queen City Bowl and see what happens next year. And for everybody who hung with us and listened to our first podcast and watched, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. This is not going to grow without the support of you, so we appreciate that. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, like the page. Comments down below. If you have a guest you want me to talk to or a hot topic we need to talk about, make sure you put that in the comment section. We'll get back with you that way. But in next, until next time, be cool, and we will see you next time on the 704 High School Highlight.